Welcome and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for spending some time with us today for this webinar on 10.7 gigahertz bandwidth common mode filters for new USB and HDMI 2.1 standards. Optimizing antenna RF sensitivity in noisy conditions and compliance with EMC standards are mandatory for industrial and personal electronic applications. This webinar will help hardware engineers concerned with antenna descents or EMC standards compliance, as well as embedded system engineers looking for ways to design more compact high-speed USB and HDMI connectors. There's a dedicated session with various RSSI spectrum analysis and transmission speed test results for Wi-Fi and 10 Gbps data transmission. My name is Yvonne and I will be your moderator for today's event. Our expert will be available to answer your questions at the end of this webinar, so if anything comes up, please share it with us using the Q&A widget that you see at the bottom of your screen. We will try and answer as many questions as possible. And we would also like to invite you to discover all the widgets that you see at the bottom of your screen, as there is some useful information in there. For example, you can find a PDF of this presentation and other useful links under the resource widget, which is the third one to your left. Also, if by any chance you miss out on some important points, no worries, all registrants will receive a post-event email with the link to the on-demand version of this webinar. Now, before we start, quickly some housekeeping information. Uh, you can expand your slide deck or maximize it to full screen by clicking in the top right corner. We also recommend using a wired internet connection and closing any programs or browser sessions that are running in the background as webinars are bandwidth intensive. This webcast is being streamed to your computer, so there's no dial-in number. And for the best audio quality, please make sure your computer speakers or headset are turned on and the volume is up so you can hear the presenter. As some networks cause slides to advance more slowly than others, turning off your VPN is recommended. And if your slides run behind, pushing F5 on your keyboard will refresh the page. Additional answers to some common technical issues can be found under the help widget. This webinar will be recorded. All right, so let's get started and let me hand over to our speakers. Good morning, everybody. My name is Arnaud Fardois and I'm very pleased to present you this webinar. Let's see the agenda. We will see in the first part why common mode filtering is required in some applications. To avoid antenna descents or desensitization issues, but also to help to comply to EMC standards in industrial noisy environment. We will see also how our ECMF improved the EAZ robustness. In the second part, my colleague Kevin from our application lab, will show the benefit of common mode filter through measurement results performed in our lab. He will explain two demos on antenna descents, filtering, and one demo on data transpar transmission transparency. As our latest CCMF features very high 10 GHz bandwidth, to comply with latest high-speed standards like HDMI 2.1 on USB 4, we will review these standards. In the third part, we will review our wide product portfolio, and we will review how our integrated technology can cover a wide range of applications. What is an ECMF? It's an integrated technology with the combination of a common mode filter and an ESD protection. Thanks to the, this silicon integrated technology, we can propose very small products on very high and deep rejection compared to passive technology. The integrated ESD protection is optimized with low coupling voltage. High-speed data links is made with differential pairs, with two signals, 
d plus on d minus in phase opposition from a transceiver in this case. Most of electronic systems have multiple differential high speed connectors with internal ICs, micro microcontroller or controller, transceiver, but also external clocks. In this page, we are going to see how electromagnetic interference, EMI, need to be considered to avoid unwanted noise emission. For differential signals in phase opposition, two modes are considered. Differential mode and common mode. The common mode is the main risk of noise emission. In the ideal world, the data are visible in differential pair, whereas the common mode signal is zero. Let's see the major examples of noise. The noise can come from an external clock. It is visible in common mode. It's a source of noise radiation. The second example is a coupling of other signals, like another data line. The third one, which was occur very often, is Q on data lines due to non-symmetrical signal lines with time difference. All the noise disturbances generate radiation near d plus on d minus but also through the cable or flex. If we summarize the challenge for the filter, two signals are considered. The useful signals in differential mode and the radiating noise in common mode with lower or similar frequency. To better understand our ECMF filtering behavior, let's look what happens in frequency domain. As shown previously, common mode noise can come from high frequency signals with the risk that the useful signals on the common mode noise may have the same frequency range. The challenge for a common mode filter is to transmit the useful signals in purple and to reject the common mode noise in green. With an ECMF in line with this target, the common mode noise is suppressed, whereas the useful signals is from it transmitted as the cutoff frequency is higher. With this example, d plus on d minus, the common mode is suppressed. Then the green signals is cleaned. The combination of ECMF with common mode filter on ESD protection will also protect the transceiver against ESD. Our ECMF brings optimized solution to designers between the connector and transceiver. Let's move of one of the major applications with one electronic system. We can see here an electronic system with multiple high-speed differential ports such as USB Type-C in this case, HDMI, and MIPI for the display. Close to this system, a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth RF receiver. With these high-speed signals, cables or flex radiate high-frequency signals. 
we can see spectral lines with high speed power bandwidths, but also with harmonics. The red spectral lines can be received by the antenna. So at the, ante at the antenna, there is the useful signals, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in this case, and the high-speed radiations. If the useful signals is lower than the high-speed signal radiation, the RF receiver is not able to get the useful signals. It is called antenna descent or desensitization. To solve this issue, data line regression must be reduced by a common mode filter placed on differential lines as follows. With these filters, regression are reduced. RF receiver can get the useful signals. RF sensitive is improved, the RF connection is active. The integrated ESD protection, integrated in our ACMF, protects also the receivers. Let's see the second major application of our ECMF with the EMC standards. The EMC, electromagnetic compatibility, is the ability of an equipment or a system to properly operate in its electromagnetic environment by limiting the interference of electromagnetic energy. The EMC consideration is key in industrial market. With a wide range of inattentional sources of EMI. With some examples here, with power supplies, electric motors, switching power converters. With all this kind of application, we can say that our ECMF helps to comply with IC 61000-4-2 with the ESD protection on IC 61000-4-3 with the filtering to pass the radiated and the conducted immunity test. A big benefit of our ECMF is to improve the ESD robustness compared to a single ESD protection thanks to the serial resistor. If we look one example of application with the following description limit condition of the IC, a microcontroller in this case, with 12.5 volt maximum value to apply on two amps linked to the HBM ESD conditions. In this case, the standard ESD protection with 6 volt breakdown voltage on 0.8 ohm serial resistor. With 12.5 volt clamping voltage applied to the ESD protection, in fact, 8 amp is applied on the protection, then 10 amps for the system. In this case, with 10 amp TLP, the description occurs at 5 kV, according to the IEC 61000-4-2. In the second example, with the ECMF, we take an ECMF with 5 ohm serial resistor. In this case, with the same limit condition of the IC, 2 amp is applied on the ECMF serial resistor, then 
10 volt. The clamping voltage to consider in this case is 22.5 volt. With 6 volt breakdown voltage and 0.8 ohm ferrule resistor, then 20.5 ohms is applied on the protection, then 22.5 ohms for the system. The destruction occurs at 11 kV according to the IEC 61000-4-2. We find the same result when we look the TLP curve of the datasheet with 22.5 volt, the TLP current is in the range of 20 amp. We can conclude that our ECMF improves the ESD immunity. Let's move on to the second part with the application demo session presented by my colleague, Kevin. Okay, hello everyone. In this part, we will see some uh, application examples and demonstrations that we made in our laboratory. Um, and first of all, we will show the interest of our filters to remove the common mode noise, and then that it is transparent uh, for the application. That means it does not degrade the useful signal. Okay, so the goal of these demonstrations is to show the impact of our filters to be able to suppress the antenna distance phenomenon, as explained before. Um, indeed, high speed data transfer between two devices can generate um, some radiated common mode noise through the cable, okay? Which can be on the same frequency range than the useful signal we want to receive. Uh, for example, Wi-Fi signal. Uh, the common mode noise generated by the high-speed data transfer can decrease the sensitivity of the radio frequency system. Uh, so, in this demonstration, uh, we place a home gateway with 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz Wi-Fi. Uh, this box communicates with a computer here, okay, which uh, analyzes the Wi-Fi signal received with a software. The software analyzes the power of the received signal and the frequency channel used. At the same time, we exchange that task between a solid state drive and a computer communicating in USB 3.2 at 10 gigabit per second through an USB Type-C cable. So these demonstrations has been done twice, one without filter and one with our filter. ECMF 4-40A110 are mounted on the ST eval board, the ST eval dash OET 005D. Okay. Um, two evaluation boards are used, one on the computer side and one on the SSD side to suppress the common mode noise. Okay, now we will present the results of this demonstration. Um, the picture on the top left represents screenshots of our Wi-Fi uh, analyzer software for Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz. And the one on the bottom left for Wi-Fi 5 GHz without filter. The yellow curve gives the Wi-Fi signal RSSI, that means the received signal power. And we can observe that when we don't have any USB 3.2 transfer, okay, here, we have a good Wi-Fi signal reception. But when we start to exchange the data between the computer and the SSD here, okay, in red, we lose the Wi-Fi connection. 
uh, then signal reappears when USB 10 gigabit per second that data transfer is stopped. Uh, this phenomenon appears on both Wi-Fi 2.4 and Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz. Otherwise, uh, when we add the ST eval board with our ECMF 4-40A110, uh, we keep a good reception of the Wi-Fi signal, regardless of whether the transfer is active or not. So, um, with these results, there is two conclusions of this uh, of this demonstration. The first one is that the USB 3.2 at 10 gigabit per second can generate noise in Wi-Fi 2.4 and Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz frequency range and decrease the sensitivity of Wi-Fi receiver. The second conclusion of this demonstration is that with our ECMF, cable radiations are attenuated, removing antenna distance effect of USB 3.2 on Wi-Fi bands. Now uh, we will present a second demonstration uh, which shows the level of commode mode attenuation or ECMF 4-40A110 can uh, provide on a digital signal. Um, indeed, as present before, the commode mode is responsible of disturbances, unwanted noise, and we want to attenuate him. For this setup, we use a nice speed differential pattern generator here, okay, which provides 10 gigabit per second PRBS data. PRBS means pseudo random binary sequence. This generator provides the data through two cables with a different length to generate skew between the data plus and the data minus. The signals are transmitted through a, a PCB. On the first case, we use a, a, through, a through PCB, meaning PCB with transmission line and without ECMF. On the second case, we use a PCB with or ECMF, with or ECMF 4-40A110, to compare both results. Okay, after that, a combiner is used to add the two differential signals and obtain the commode mode signal. And this commode mode signal is measured using a spectrum analyzer. In the application, uh, Wi-Fi channels measured on Wi-Fi 2.4 are channels 1 to, to 14, which runs between 2.41 and 2.0. 485 GHz. Okay, spectral lines in blue on this chart are measured between 2.4 and 2.5 GHz and represent the common mode signal measure on the spectrum analyzer with a through PCB. On the other end, the orange spectral lines measure the common mode signal with ECMF 4-40A 110. As we can see, we have a good attenuation of 15 dB on all the Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz band. So this is in line with, uh, with our specification um, of our filter specification, which show a common mode attenuation of minus 15 dB at 2.4 GHz. Um, after the Wi-Fi 2.4, we will show the results for both Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6E uh, bands. Uh, frequency channels between 5.16 and 7.1 GHz are measured for Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6E. So we made measurements um, on the whole frequency band concerned by this Wi-Fi. As shown on the previous slide, spectral lines in blue represent the common mode signal measured on the spectrum analyzer with a through PCB. And the orange one here, 
the common mode signal with all products, the ECMF4 40A110. As we can see uh, in the wall WA55 and WA56 E band, we have a good attenuation around uh, 15 dB. And thanks to the command mode filter, we have a good command mode rejection, which can secure the Wi Fi connection. Okay, now we will talk about the data transmission transparency. Uh, indeed, the two demonstrations performed before uh, show us the efficiency of our command mode filter to suppress unwanted noise created by the common mode. Uh, so this is uh, the first point. A second important point is the transparency of our filter in the application. Of course, our product shouldn't affect the useful high-speed signal transmitted between transceivers. Um, on this first test, to, to show the transparency of our filter, we plug the 10 gigabit per second SSD on a computer with a software which measures the real speed of transmitted data in megabyte per second. Uh, the software works by measuring the read and write speed of the SSD for sequential and random operations. After measuring the data transmission rates, we perform the measurement again by adding the ST eval burn with our filter. So we can observe that our filter does not affect the transmission speed of the useful data. Indeed, the read and write data speed measured are in the same range with or without our filter. Another measurement to show the transparency of our filter in the application is a diagrams measurement. Um, today, on high-speed digital standards, like HDMI 2.1, USB 3.2, USB 4, for example, there is a diagrams mask template to respect to pass the standards. Okay, um, an A diagram, okay, is produced by repetitively sampling a digital signal on an oscilloscope vertical axis while triggering the horizontal sweep with the data rate. On this example, on this slide, we perform a diagrams measurement on USB 4 standard. For that, we use a PRBS pattern generator with de-emphasis and pre-shot. Uh, it's, to, it's to simulate the real signal of the standard being tested. Then we have our UCMF, ECMF under test or a through PCB. And then an oscilloscope which integrates the USB 4 reference cable insertion loss, CTLE and DFE, which are a signal processing algorithm defined in the standard. The test is performed in two steps. The first one, which is shown at the bottom left, is measured on a perfect calibration through it means a without uh, our filter. And the second one, okay, is performed with the ECMF4 40A110 at the bottom right. As we can see, there is a very low A diagram distortion with the addition of the filter and the template of the standard is respected. Finally, uh, our laboratory can perform various tests like ESD test, for example, IC 61000-4-2, or ISO 10605 for automotive purpose. Uh, for that, we use a Faraday chamber here and a 8 GHz oscilloscope, of course, to, to catch the first peak of the, of the shot. Um, we can also do some TLP measurement or HBM measurement, uh, for example. On the right, we can see uh, our 8-diagram bench 
as presented before, we made some a diagram measurement on a lot of standards, like uh, for example USB 2.0, USB 3, USB 4, HDMI, MIPI, or Display Power, and so on. Um, S parameter frequency measurement on single-ended or differential devices using a vector net network analyzer, uh, which can make measurement up to 67 GHz, and measurement on spectrum analyzer, like radiated measurement, uh, harmonic measurement, up to 44 GHz, and so on. Thank you, Kevin. Let's move on the uh, next part. Let's see the HDMI 2.1 on USB 4 standard overview. Let me start by the HDMI standard. You can see here the HDMI 2.1 standard covering up to 48 gigabit per second. With four differential lanes, then up to 12 gigabit per second per lane. We can see here the HDMI control lines. I take the opportunity to inform you that we have some dedicated AC products for HDMI control lines. On top of ESD protection, we can propose some extra function like uh, an OCP to control the long HDMI cable, or I would say the poor quality HDMI cable, we have some function like dynamic pull-up and we can propose also a reshaping of the I2C bus. We have one part dedicated for the source application, HDMI 2C4-5F2, and one part dedicated for the SYNC application, HDMI 2C2-5F2. For the high speed lines, you can see the topology with four differential lines. Then two ECMF4 are required with our latest ECMF4 48 110 and 10. One of the specificity of the latest HDMI standard is that the clock is including is it in the FRL lanes. Then if we look the previous HDMI 1.4 on 2.0, then the bit weight was a smaller with one late with the clock on three lanes with the differential signals. Then the bit weight of each lane is 3.3 gigabit per second for the HDMI 1.4 on 6 gigabit per second for the HDMI 2.0. On the control lines, we are similar compared to the HDMI 2.1 standard. Let's move on the USB 4 standard. And this standard has been announced recently in September 2019. This standard can uh, runs only with the USB Type-C uh, connector. And if we look at this uh, connector, we have two lanes uh, operation, mean with two, la two lanes for the transmitter and two lanes for the receiver. And the highest bitrate covered by this uh, standard is uh, 40 gigabit per second. And you need uh, some uh, certificate cables. One of the benefits of this signal that I will show you later on is this uh, standard then uh, can cover uh, different display uh, protocols. And you have a backward compatibility with USB 3.2, USB 2.0, and Thunderbolt 3. If we look at the USB 3, then the USB 3 Gen 1, 5 gigabit per second, Gen 2, 10 gigabit per second, and Gen 2x2, two two, then 20 gigabit per second, are supported by this standard. And if we look at the topology for the CMF, then you need 
one ECMF, two lines for the D plus and D minus, and two ECMF, four lines for the high speed data lines. As mentioned previously, then uh, some protocols can be uh, turned on, then USB 3, PCI, DisplayPort, that you can see here. Then uh, this uh, three standard can be tunnel in the USB 4. We have one example here. You see the display port USB 3 PCI frames in series in the USB 4 interface. For the longer reach application and some active cable are required. Okay, then let's move the complete product portfolio that, that we can propose for the USB 4. Let me show you the complete product mapping uh, for the USB Type-C application for the USB 4. Then for uh, high speed line, D plus, D minus, SSRX, SSTX, then we have our ECMF. If you don't need the command mode filter function, then we have some single ESD protection. We have some ESD protection then for the CC line on SBU lines. And for the VBUS, then for the power delivery application, up to 100 watt 20 volt, then we have the, the full range, full range of uh, ESD protection for VBUS. On top of ESD protection, then we have some uh, dedicated ACIP developed with our colleagues of our uh, of the STM32 uh, division of ST. Then with with some uh, extra function uh, that we we can propose uh, with the STM32. Then to cover the sync source or DRP application with our TCPP with some function like uh, get drivers of the MOSFET, some OVP, OCP on the VBUS on CC lines on dead battery management. Then we have one, one product dedicated for the sync than the TCPP 01-M12, the TCPP 02-M18 for the source application on the TCPP 03-M20 for the DRP application. Let's move on our ECMF uh, portfolio overview. We have a wide range of ECMF portfolio uh, to cover the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth bandwidth rejection. We have four package alternatives, then two packages for the four lines application, and two packages for the two lines application. With 400 micrometer pitch alternative or 500 micrometer pitch alternative. Then the 500 micrometer pitch are here. Then we have one ECMF two lines and one ECMF four lines. The 400 micrometer pitch devices have been released more recently. And we are covering from 5 GHz up to 10.7 GHz. And the two latest devices are part of the ST Tenure Longevity Program. Okay, then let's see the two latest ECMF key features. High bandwidth capability with 10.7 GHz. As shown previously, we are compliant with the latest high-speed standards like HDMI 2.1, USB 4, USB 2, SD card, display power, SATA and MIPI. Very high rejection on Wi-Fi bandwidth. As shown by uh, Kevin, we are compliant with the latest Wi-Fi 6E standard with uh, minus 70 dB SCC to 1 at 6 GHz. Then we are compliant with all the uh, eight diagrams, USB 4, USB 3.2 Gen 2, and HDMI 2.1. We have two package alternatives. And to help our customer to design, we can propose evaluation board, one with SMA connector, 
or one with USB Type-C connector. The USB Type-C evaluation board can be ordered on the ST website. If we look at our uh, product portfolio uh, for industrial and consumer application, then let's start by the four lines. These products here then are ranked by uh, application data rate with trade-off between common mode attenuation and differential bandwidth. Then if you are looking for some frequency band to reject, different to Y5, we have some products to propose. And we have one, for instance, to cover from 1.7 to 3.5 gigahertz, and we've also 5 to uh, 5.7. And if you need, I would say, some uh, small frequency to reject, we have also this device starting from 120 megahertz. We have this one as well. And we have a specific product uh, with, uh, on top of common mode filter, we have an additional differential filter, let's say to propose a strong SDD to one uh, at 2.4 gigahertz dedicated for the HDMI 1.4. For the SAMF two lines, then this table also is wrong by the data rate capability. The major application that we cover is uh, the USB 2 for all these devices. And then according to the trade-off between the common mode attenuation and differential ball width, we have one devices with a, start, with a regression starting from 500 megahertz. And we have, we have also this device starting from 700 megahertz. And to conclude on our ECMF product portfolio overview, you can see here the, the whole product portfolio with a product dedicated for consumer on industrial market in blue and the three products in yellow dedicated for automotive then with different trade-off between a common mode rejection and bandwidth. And these devices are automotive graded and with a specific package for automotive with wettable flank. What is the benefit of our integrated technology? Our ECMF can bring a lot of benefit thanks to our integrated technology. Then you move from, from a current solution with ESD protection and passive command filter to a single device. Then you reduce the size by 70%. We specify in our data sheet all the parameters with the complete function, here's the protection plus command mode filter. You simplify the layout and design, and we reduce the number of fit, and we improve the reliability. Our ECMF are very successful on the market. Let's see some uh, application running with our devices. Our ECMF are used in personal electronics application and industrial application. Let's start by personal electronics with some example of application. You can see home gateway, streaming box, HDMI stick, all equipment for telepresence, tablet or notebook plus docking station, game console, point of sales, smartwatch and smart band. For industrial application, a lot of industrial PC uh, application like this one, but also panel PC, or medic PC, various uh, equipment in industrial, like medical equipment, measurement equipment, Security market, home automation on camera network, fitness equipment, and low mobile robot. Thanks to the support from our colleagues from our application lab, we can propose some specific presentation on some dedicated application. It's what we call blue blue presentation. 
you see one example here of our latest presentation. You can find a one slide summary with all the slots that we can cover with the suitable devices. And for each slot, you can find one slide with the key parameters to meet. And you can find also the key products and key parameters to meet in the application. Then don't it is day to come back to us and we will be pleased to adapt the presentation for your own application. Let's move on to the conclusion of this uh, webinar. Thanks to our ECMF wide product portfolio, we can cover consumer industrial and automotive application. Thanks to automotive great products ESC Q101 for automotive. We can bring a lot of flexibility with a lot of rejection profile available for filtering and with very high bandwidth products to cover all the latest high speed standard for industrial and automotive application. Thanks to our integrated technology, we can propose in one single package the ESD protection function plus common mode filtering function with two lines or four lines alternative. And our QFN package are very convenient and suitable for industrial and automotive market with wettable flank package for automotive. We improve the quality with our integrated technology with fit rate improvement on ASC Q101 qualified product for automotive. As shown during this webinar, we propose noise immunity solution and ESD protection solution with our ECMF. We prevent antenna descents on RF noise issues. We help to comply with EMC standard and we can propose high protection efficiency thanks to the low ESD clamping voltage technology. I would like to thank you for your attendance. Thank you. Okay, so after this great presentation, we're now ready with our expert panel to answer your questions. So welcome. And let me kick off with our first question. Is it possible to swap D plus and D minus? Yes, it's uh, one, one benefit of our device. It's um, to, to bring the flexibility to swap D plus and D minus. One of our main recommendations is to put the ESD protection close to the connector. Okay, we can take the other question. All right, thank you. Then we'll go to our next question. Do you have some devices to filter low frequencies? So, um, we, we, have, uh, we have one device uh, that we showed uh, the, in our mapping, the, our ECMF02-2 HSMX6. With this one, let's say we, we can provide a very wide, uh, wide range of, of frequency to reject from uh, 500 megahertz up to uh, 6, 7 uh, gigahertz. Okay, okay thank you. Continue. Yes, we'll take our next question. Do we have some constraints about the PCB layout? We have, uh, we have one application uh, uh, to, to get some recommendation about uh, the, the PCB layout. The application number is AN5680X. Uh, if we just give, let's say, the, the three major uh, recommendations, I would say uh, the differential line must be matched to uh, 100 ohm differential uh, impedance. The second one, as we showed during this webinar, is to, to keep the same length between the differential lines. And I would say for the, the last one is to put the ESD protection, let's say, close to the, to the ESD source to secure the, uh, to maximize the EMI. Okay, we okay. can take the next. 
Our next question. Yes, our next question is coming from Shidiminas. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Can EMC4 40A110 be used for 2.5 gigabit and 5 gigabit Ethernet interface? Uh, yes, for sure. Yes, our part can uh, is uh, compliant to, with these two standards because uh, with these standards we speak about uh, four differential lanes, then one dot twenty five gigabit per second per lane. Then our part can uh, manage easily this um, this bit rate. Uh, we, our ESD protection also is unidirectional. Then. Uh, the only recommendation is to avoid to, uh, to go below minus 500 millivolts. But for sure, our part is uh, fully dedicated for such kind of application. Okay, okay thank you. Our next, the next question, yes. Um, what is the best location to place ECMF on the PCB? Uh, as mentioned previously, the, we recommend to put the CMF close to the connector. Uh, I would say close to the ESD source. If anyway, uh, for some customers, uh, you have some uh, specific constraint and you, you are free to come back to us uh, to discuss if you think that your CMF in your application to be put close to the IC could make sense, then it's something open that we can discuss. All right. We'll go to our next question. How does the ECMF behave with external magnetic fields? <clears throat> okay, so for this question, um, uh, in an industrial environment, of course, there is a, some strong uh, electromagnetic field. Um, but uh, our ECMF can't be saturated because um, uh, they don't have any uh, magnetic material inside uh, inside the uh, SMF product. Um, inductors coupling are made by non magnetic uh, by non magnetic materials, of course. It's okay for the next question. All right, we'll go to the next question. Could you please let us know if automotive grade versions are pin to pin compatible with industrial grade versions? Yeah, it's what one of the benefits of our of our device. Yes, the the automotive uh, devices are in fact uh, are similar to our ECMF four in, in, with a 500 micrometer pitch. Then uh, we have uh, this part, uh, industrial parts on automotive graded parts are uh, pin to pin compatible. Yes, one of the benefits. All right, thank you. Okay. Our next question: uh, Why? Does our ECMF with 4 GHz bandwidth only complies with USB 2.0? Okay, that's a good question. It's uh, because, in fact, um, we, the, we could say that we have a first generation of device uh, released a longer time ago, where the, we have maximized the trade-off for the bandwidth, but uh, with the lowest, lowest bitrate capability for some application, like uh, I speed the uh, application like USB 3. Then these devices um, are dedicated for uh, USB 2, but we recommend now for the latest standard like USB 3 on HDMI to use our latest product release since now more than five years. And that's why two, uh, our latest products uh, now are uh, in line with the uh, high speed standard. Okay, so thank you, Arno. We'll take our next question. Yes, do you have application notes to help design? Uh, yes, we have, um, we have three application notes to help designs um, about, about the CMF. The first one is uh, AN4511 uh, about uh, the principle of common mode filters. Uh, we have, we have uh, the AN um, 4356, it's about the antenna descent phenomenon and uh, how uh, an SEMF can, uh, can, provide, can uh, provide a good solution against this phenomenon. And we have also um, um, the AN6686 about um, PCB layout. Um, 
and the uh, and recommendations for the layout. Okay. All right, thank you. That Kevin, we'll take uh, our next question. Could you please let the audience know if your demo is done with low quality cable? Um, okay, so the demonstration made um, in our laboratory, uh, like uh, the antenna distance demonstrations, is performed with um, a USB Type C uh, shielded cable. So uh, this is a high quality, quality uh, uh, cable. All right, thank you. And I see we're almost running out of time, almost at the top of the hour. So let me take one last question. Is this solution available on extended temperature range, for example, for automotive? Yeah, uh, as mentioned in the slide with the three parts in yellow, we have three products dedicated for automotive and to cover yeah, the automotive application and also qualify for with uh, ASC Q101 standard. All right, thank you. So this last question brings us to the end of this webinar. Once again, we will be sending all registrants to this webinar a post-event email with the link to the on-demand version of this webinar, as well as additional resources. And a PDF of this version of this webinar is already available in the resource widget. And if someone you know is interested in pursuing a career with ST, we are hiring right now. And more details can be found in the career widget at the bottom of your screen. And that would be the second one to your left. So thank you again for attending our webinar. We hope you enjoyed it and were able to take away some useful information. Also, a thank you to those of you who took the time to answer our survey. And of course, a big thank you to our speaker panel, Arnaud, Kevin, and Fabrice for making this webinar possible. Please stay safe, and we hope you come back soon. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.